um, the beginning part of these pH notes here, the beginning part is the should look familiar. These the first couple pages here are the equations that we talked about yesterday. So I'm going to go through the first pages, first couple pages, kind of quickly because um, they should feel like review. Um, but we talked about yesterday how to find those pH equations and what pH actually stands for. Some guy named Soren Sorensen came up with a pH scale. Honestly, who names their kids Soren Sorensen? <laughs> right? I mean, really. You gotta think about these things when you're naming your children. That's terrible. Um, he said it would make more sense to, to, for the pH scale to be logarithmic because a lot of times when you're looking at the molarities of the hydrogen ion or the hydroxide ion, those numbers are really, really small. So when you're looking um, at some examples here, if you saw um, a molarity that looks something like this bottom one here, you'd just be like, okay, it's small. Yeah, I get it. There's lots of zeros. <laughs> Your brain just kind of shuts off halfway through. So he said, wouldn't that make more sense, since some of these numbers are so tiny, to just look at it logarithmically based on powers of 10? How many factors of 10 are you away from the number 1? Um, so this guy, this point 1, or 1 times 10 to the negative 1, the equation we learned yesterday was this guy right here, that the pH is the negative log of the H+. Plus. And negative log, remember, is just fancy math speak for what's the exponent of this number. Yes, Joe? Yes, they will work all the time. So when you see these guys, this negative log of H+, plus, if logs are just fancy math speak for what's the exponent of a number, when you see 1 times 10 to the negative 1, if I said, what's the exponent, you don't need your calculator, right? You just say the exponent is negative 1. However, we want the negative log. So we're going to just flip the sign on that. So we would say the pH is 1. Or 1 times 10 to the negative 7, what's the exponent? It's 7. Or 13. Yeah. Yes. Yep. That was what we were just seeing if your brains could find the patterns in the numbers. Yep. So in these examples here, our H plus is decreasing, right? That H plus concentration number is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And as this guy gets smaller, this guy, the pH, is getting bigger, right? It increases. That's because if your H plus is going down, H plus is associated with acids, right? So if you have less acid stuff, then your pH should be high, right? Because that means you're a base, not an acid. They're inverses of one another. So if something's really acidic, it has lots of H plus ions, then the pH is going to be <coughs> small, right? They'll be lower, smaller, below 7 if it's acidic. We also did some yesterday where they gave us the pH. Well, the P in pH stands for power. It stands for an exponent. So if your power is 7, your H plus is going to be 1 times 10 to the negative 7, or 1 times 10 to the negative 4. Any of the ones where the pH is a whole number, or the H plus or OH minus, are 1 times 10 to the somethings, are the easy ones. No calculator required. However, they're not always that way. Sometimes you'll get concentrations that aren't one times ten of the something, or pHs that aren't whole numbers. But the equations still hold true. It's just we need our calculators help then to do those. Can't do them in our head. So H plus to pH, we need to take the negative log of 2.7 times 10 to the negative we can't just say 3 that you see the exponent and you go, oh, it's 3. You could only do that if it's a 1 times 10 to the something. Other than that, you need your calculator's help. So it might be a good idea just to practice because all, using that log button and scientific notation and everything, um, good idea to practice with that calculator. Don't practice for the first time when you're taking your test on Tuesday. Okay. Um, when you're typing these guys in, you should get something around 2.57.
Now, here's the good news um, with Sing Figs. If you weren't here yesterday, um, Sing Figs, you're going to get a little Sing Fig break in this chapter because there's a whole set of rules you'd have to learn to do Sing Figs with logs. And quite frankly, we don't use them very often. It's just four, four or five days out of the whole school year. And I'd, I'd have to take a whole day to teach you about how to do Sing Figs with logs. And that's kind of silly for just a handful of days out of the whole school year. So as long as you are anywhere in the right ballpark, you'll be fine for your test on Tuesday. So if you wrote down like 2.6 on, uh, on your test on Tuesday, that's fine. That's okay, as long as you're close. For that next guy, we would need the negative log of that H plus concentration. When you're typing that one in, you should get somewhere around 7.32. Everyone doing okay with their calculators? Just want to make sure you're all practicing. You get a get a few tries in. Let me know now if you're having calculator issues, because I'm happy to help you now. But if you come up to me on Tuesday and go, I don't know how to use my calculator, just gonna shake my head at you. <laughs> Say, ah, too bad. So, uh, this guy, you would type in the number first. So you're gonna type in like the four. Let's see, there, four point. then put the log button. Okay, number first and then log on that calculator. Are we okay? Everyone's had a little chance to practice? Okay. What about if your pH has a decimal in it? Well, the P in pH stands for power. It's a power and exponent. So we want that to be our exponent. 1 times 10 to the negative 2.9. Or 1 times 10 to the negative 8.8. .8. That's what we want, but those numbers look weird, right? You, you never see decimals in your exponent. So that's what we want. We just need our calculators help translating that into a properly written number. So for that one, you, you have to kind of take it and write it the long way in your calculator. If you try to use the little EXP button or the little EE button on some of your calculators, it won't let you do it. It thinks you're typing because it's saying, why are you putting a decimal in your exponent? You're not supposed to do that. Um, but you can get around that by kind of typing this in the long way. So if you do 1 times 10, some of you might have a little x to the y key, maybe? Hmm? We're not doing the log of this number, though, right? We're just actually typing that in. Um, so some of you might have a little x to the y key. Some of you might have a little thing. It almost looks like a little carrot, like that, a little triangle almost. When you type that in, um, for this top one, you should get 0.00126, somewhere around there. If we're typing in it OK. You don't have to leave it in scientific notation. You could leave it as a regular number two. Both are acceptable. Just make sure that you know that if you saw this on my key, 1.26 times 10 to the negative third, that you would know that those two things are the same thing, right? You don't have to put it in scientific notation, but um, frequently they do. <laughs> I'm sure it's there somewhere. Which calculator you got? Show it, hold it up so I can. You got it? Okay. All right. So it looks something like that. This bottom one, we should be getting uh, somewhere in the range of 1.58 times 10 to the negative ninth. Or some of your calculators might not be showing it in scientific notation and you see point eight zeros and a 2. You might be seeing that, right? It's, it's, just, it's making it a regular number instead of a scientific number. So if you're seeing point, a whole bunch of zeros and a two all the way at the end, that's the same thing as that. I just ran out of space to show you all the numbers. Okay. Can I see a quick thumbs up if people are good on calculators, if we're getting the right number? Yeah. Okay. Just want to make sure everybody's good before we get onto newer scary stuff. Okay. So 
The OHs work the exact same way as the HS do, exactly the same. Um, we're just solving for OHs instead of H's or POHs instead of PHs. So if they tell you the OH is 1 times 10 to the negative 3, the POH is 3. Or if the POH is 13, 1 times 10 to the negative 13. So if something's really, really, really acidic, what that means is, what that means is we've got lots of hydrogen ions, right? Well, the H, the pH measures how the how much hydrogen ion is there. So if there's lots of H pluses, it's going to be close to the zero end of the pH scale. If it's mostly OHs, not Hs, it's going to be on the high end of the scale. And the pH and the pOH always have to add up to 14. Thank you guys have seen.